Hi everybody, well I'm not alone as you can tell, I have our hostess, the hostess with the hostess, it's Sophie who's joining us, thanks for coming down for a chat Sophie, no problem. and thanks again for helping us sort all of this out as well, because we've got the three haunted rooms with the three dumbest people, yeah. and uh, you've been here a while, you were here longer even than the current owner. I gather. Um, no, not the current owner. Um, I was I, I replaced the ex manager, so I've been here nearly two years now. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you have? Did you work here before that as well? I, oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I worked ah, here. Ah, there yeah. you go. So <laughs> I was eighteen. I worked here. Before, we know yeah. more about you than you, you know about <laughs> right. you. So, uh, this building, great history. Yeah. I found out um, highwayman history about this place, which is very cool. We found out a few stories, a few things that have happened on streets nearby and we've been going around telling those tales mm -hmm. you've been here a while you've experienced something you told us that uh, in the room where i've been placed if you look out of the bathroom window you'll see where you saw a ghost tell us a story what happened yeah um, so in the courtyard outside so that used to be where they used to take the horses up to stable um, right. there used to be a lot of kids stable girls and stable boys if you look out sometimes, you do see people running around, around out there. Um, I thought I saw someone breaking into the owner's car one day. <laughs> Went out to investigate. There's nobody there. So just... So do you see it like full fit people as if they're solid or do you see a, yeah. a black figure? Or... No, you can see full people out there. Modern dress? No, or... they're not in modern dress. They're just in, in scruffy clothes. And it just looks like there's people just walking around out there. But there never is. <laughs> so you don't bother going out anymore. <laughs> People staying here, Yes. let's talk about them first. Yeah. People, and even one or two of the guests that we've spoken to have said, well, I feel, I feel a bit uneasy. Actually, I, I thought we heard somebody walking across the floor. Mm. And you're thinking, how commonplace is it that people come to you and say, it's is there day. an issue? So since you've been sat up here, the people sat below you on the table have said they felt a cold draft in between their feet. So they've gone and moved. And I said, Because oh, this, this is toasty warm kind of <laughs> yeah, place, isn't it? Um, I've just gone in the kitchen and a pair of kitchen tongs have flew at me. So I don't know what you've been saying. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that's just in the last hour. So this is kind of vivid for everybody. Yeah, it, does it's does everybody time. experience the same thing? No. Um, so we've had about two months ago, we had people ring me at seven in the morning saying they're really sorry they had to leave. There was someone stood in the room that wouldn't move and wouldn't leave, so they left at two in the morning. A lot of things are just grabbing legs, grabbing arms. There was one that was pretty bad a few weeks ago where someone couldn't get up because someone was sat on their chest, which is a bit scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's different for everybody. People just see things or hear things. A lot of people see things in the mirror going down into the restaurant. Yeah. But it's when it's in their rooms that they get, they get more scared. And I've noticed things. that in, in most of the rooms, there are mirrors anyway. Yeah. And most people who deal with this kind of thing, know that you can see spirit more clearly in reflection than you can in real life. Yeah. So having a mirror in a room that you already think is <laughs> hot is just kind of asking for trouble as well. Yeah, is, but yeah. that's a good thing. What's the most vivid thing that anybody's told you? You, you had the chest thing there, you could see it, uh, playing devil's advocate. Uh, it's that sleep paralysis thing where yeah. you just have a bit of a panic attack. Yeah. You've heard the place is haunted. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, maybe. What's the most vivid thing that somebody's come up to you and said, you'll never guess what? It's probably the people that left saying there was someone stood in our room, in the corner, there was someone stood there that would not leave. Then they had to physically, like that wasn't in a reflection, that was someone stood, stood in front there of in them. The room. Yeah, and they obviously saw it clearly and there's two yeah. people seeing the same exactly thing. Exactly the same thing and they both had to leave because they were that scared, they ran out of the hotel. Right, let's now talk about <laughs> actual characters because one of the characters that i was made aware of was mrs bowler who oh, the apparently was the landlady one of the yeah. original landladies here yeah. who was a who was a bit of a tartar yeah so she's we don't see her a lot she apparently grabs people downstairs we i've never experienced this but a lot of guests have apparently she squeezes you if she doesn't like it so she's <laughs> she fell down the stairs outside and smashed her head open yeah um, so right, she died right, back yeah. the, the, the young girl that died in the cellar um she got pregnant um, a boy that she shouldn't have, so he pushed her down the stairs. She died in the cellar, but again, nothing, none of these stories I've ever heard of. It's all different, 
different things. <laughs> the, the thing that I, and I was talking to, to one of your guys and he was saying a lot of people have experienced similar things, but we keep hearing the story a different way. The reverse I've heard. Everybody that spoke about Mrs. Bowler tells the same thing. She was a bit of a Mrs. Bouquet. She was a bit. Yeah. She was kind of strong-willed yeah. and bossy. And I would have thought if you were dealing with clientele that were kind of upper class, because mm -hmm. we're talking people who, who could afford to travel by coach, yeah. essentially, uh, and coaches in the 1600s, cheap. I can't imagine how much money you'd have to have to be able to do that. I presume you'd have to have a degree of authority to be able to deal with people who had really high expectations all the time. That story has never changed. And the fact that she slept and uh, it would be so easy to make her death, da, da, da. Yeah. But no, she slipped, she fell, she cracked yeah. her head. <laughs> yeah. Stuff happens. Yeah. So every time I've heard that story, it's always been to the core. Why would you think she would be downstairs rather than on the upper floors where presumably the wealthy would spend more time? So it's not the, the the rooms upstairs weren't really for wealthier people. They were for like oh well we had like Charles Dickens and Captain Cook and stuff there, but it was more to come and recruit people to go to work here. It wasn't oh, really right, the wealthier right. people that were coming here. So she was looking after troublemakers that were getting drunk. All <laughs> oh, right, because well, that, that's it. That that makes more sense yeah, then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, she wasn't looking after the wealthy people that got on. I think she was more looking after the the men downstairs that were getting drunk and ruckus and. And these are all of the people that would be that looking would, after the horses, yeah, dealing with the bar, looking after looking for work. Yeah, so I think she had a lot to deal with. <laughs> makes sense. You mentioned the little girl, yeah. Mrs. Bowler. Yeah. Um, there's supposed to be the spirit of this guy called John Neverson, who was called Slick, Slick Nick. And he was a highwayman. And we know that he was, his last job was here. He robbed a coach at the top of Church Street. He eventually then had to leg it and got arrested in Wakefield. Uh, God, and he made it far. There you go, yeah. He did, did a good job. Yeah. Uh, however, he was followed the whole way and then, you know, yeah, so it, it wasn't a, a good move. And he ended up eventually being hanged and buried in an unmarked grave. So the history of the guy we know was here. And he robbed a coach that was heading to the coach house on Church Street. Yeah. This is you. Yeah. So that being the case, we've got Neverson, maybe, here. Supposed to be because he spent a lot of his money here because he was robbing people yeah. <laughs> and spending their money, not his own money. Yeah. Um, we've got the little girl, we've got Mrs. Bowler. Any other ghosts we should be looking for here then? Apparently there's a lot. We have a lot of ghost stories. Uh, the main, they're the main ones that are apparently a fact that we know that we know happened. Like we know the gotcha. landlady died here and we know that woman got pushed down. The other things, it could be anything. There's so many stories. It's um, just you've been here such a long time. Yeah. The imprint, even if you just do it generationally from the 1690s, I mean, that's a lot of time. Yeah. And it's a, because it's an open building and it's always been a public, except the time it was derelict from 39, yeah. it's always had people traveling to and fro and deaths here yeah i don't think there's ever been a time when people have said it isn't haunted no but people have in rooms have died here yeah yeah <laughs> I, th I think i don't think there's a lot of the things happen by the same ghosts i think it's all different things like we've seen different there's been a few times where we've heard children like actual children laughing in the kitchen there's been me and my restaurant manager stood in there and we can hear this kid laughing. We're like, where is this child coming from? Which is, that was just like a one-off. Or oh, he's seen in the mirror, he's seen a guy dressed in a military uniform before. So there's loads of them. We just, I don't think you see the same thing. There's probably hundreds of them. But it's weird. This is it the thing. Be coming from anywhere. Because <laughs> when we were talking originally about Mrs. Bowler, it's like, what do you want the woman who's in charge of a hotel pub, restaurant, and all the things that you are, mm -hmm. you don't want an unwelcoming person. And yet, 
you're happy to say, oh, if you come here, mind, there's this thing that might oh, fill yeah. you with dread. Oh, yeah, we, we, I love telling guests that it's haunted. It's my favourite bit of the job. <laughs> but we get a lot of people that come here because it is haunted as well. They come right. here because of the stories. Well, I, I haven't seen it massively advertised as like a, a haunted venue, and yet to everybody that I've spoken to who lives in and around Whitby, mm -hmm. they've all said, oh, that's, you want to... Yeah. And you're thinking, well, hang on. The Abbey? Yeah. St Mary's? So our, we've, a lot of our stone works from the Abbey as well, which is... Uh, <laughs> that might be part of the, that might be part part of the, the dance right yeah. there. So I what, mean, what got you into it? Because you, you sound like you, you you take it on as, ah, well, it was easy, you just grabbed me hair. Yeah. And, <laughs> it just it's sounds just, it, too easy. What, what's your background in the, all made, of this stuff? I didn't know about the haunted thing until I'd seen a few things and everyone was like, oh, yeah, it's a bit haunted and whatever. And two years later, it just doesn't bother you. you like, we have to sometimes go upstairs because all the lights have flicked off. And it's just a, it's just a, an annoyance sometimes <laughs> rather than anything else. Yeah, because I would imagine if, if you've already done the job and you switched all the lights off yeah. or you put the fire off or whatever, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're back on and you're just on your way home. Oh, it's yeah. Like... I, well, we, I stay here, so I'm staying here tonight. Um, right. I stayed here a few nights ago in your room, in fact. Happy days. <laughs> and um, I just got in bed. I think we had a big party. And it was half past one in the morning. I was back at work at seven or right. eight o'clock. And the telly kept flicking off. I was like, I just want to just want to chill out and watch telly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it flicked off, so I go and flick it back on. And then you hear, you could you find yourself talking to them. <laughs> you're like, please stop doing this. And it's like, oh, forget it. I'll just go to sleep. It's just it's, it doesn't it's not scary anymore. It used to be like with the guests and stuff. Like, oh, just give it a rest as well. Yeah, but to, to some of these people, like, and I must admit, I did kind of unsettle the couple that came in and had a listen to kind oh, of what we were yeah. doing. And I did say. Good night, and they said good night back, and I said, I hope you're alone in there. <laughs> and the woman just kind of looked back and went, night. <laughs> just sort of, you, you know for a fact, that's going to be a phone call to you at oh, some point fine. during the that's night. That's why we have the duty, I have a phone that I have to keep with me on a night time so people ring if they need me. Blame you. It's just a 24-7 job yours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the way how matter of fact it is, and I think people who work in a venue where things become commonplace, do get kind of blasé with it because, yeah. <sighs> not again. Yeah. And it becomes just part of the job. Yeah, but it's, it's a weird yeah. part of the job. It is a weird part, but it's, it's not, a, it's not a, just, they're easy to deal with with some of the customers. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> <Which> is, <laughs> What's the worst thing you've had to deal with then? Oh, you don't want to know. Oh, I really do. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, honestly, it only happens sometimes on a night. It's the cameras that get us a lot. There's a lot of stuff that happens in this room. Uh, so we've seen like a lot of gold things flying around in here. There's a guy that sits on that table. Because you've got to play the... Yes, yeah, so we have security camera. cameras that we watch in the kitchen. Um, the, all three cameras used to stop at the exact time, minute and second during the night and then start again, which is weird. But yeah, it's just like I'm trying to find something on my camera. And you've seen orbs and stuff flying around. A lot in here, yeah. There's a, a, there's a big circle here that they all go into. Do, have you noticed whether the... Do they... Yeah. Some people say that, that orbs are just dust. Mm. And I understand that, because yeah. if you see dust in front of a camera, they move like mm. dust. But have you seen the, the circles move in what appears to be an intelligent manner. Yeah, these are gold as well. They're gold? A, they're a gold colour, and they all always transport into one place, and it's in there, it's like a circle in the floor. They all go in the same place. That's weird. Yeah. I wonder what that's all about. That's... I can't wait for tonight after talking about all this all night. Fascinating. Like, oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about it is, It'll be what it'll be. We're gonna, yeah. you're gonna be kind enough to switch all the lights off. And I think, yeah. I think most of the public are. They're all gone. Yeah. They're all gone. Yeah. And we'll be as quiet as we can in yeah. our three rooms. I think there's people in the rooms around our rooms. Um, you're in. So there's, there's you above you, isn't there? And you're, Kenny above me. I'm next door to you, and you're below me. So we're, there's no other rooms in that bit, really. So therefore, if, if we are talking, it's not going to you're cause fine. you anything. You're absolutely fine. Because I, I was just concerned that we were going to do a whispery show. No, no, you're fine. You can talk. So you, we, all that's where you are is just me and you three. Right, brilliant. Okay. So well, we might come knocking middle of you the night. <laughs> we'll, try and send, we'll try and send as many things as we can 
out of hours through into yours. So you've, you've got the room with the little hatch as well, haven't you? That seems to fall off a lot when in the middle of the night, so just watch that. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Is, is there anything up there? Um, it's just, it's a storage thing, but um, above me I have the loft with all the water heaters and stuff, which goes into your little bit, so you can, not, but don't, you can crawl through. <laughs> you, know that, you know that story I've just told about the holes in the ceiling? There you go. All three will be there then, that's how that's going to run. But yeah, hopefully you'll see something or hear something tonight. Fingers crossed, yeah. but hey, so thanks darling. No, no problem, Bless you, thank darling. you very Cheers. much, Hey, this Thank woman you. has been super kind <laughs> and gave us our first Yorkshire cuddle, which is very special. <laughs> it's very good. That's brilliant. Thank you. Tonight, you're going to get the whole thing. Don't think for a second we're going to miss you out. Every second that we're hunting, you're going to be with us by our side. Don't miss it. Tonight from 9 o'clock.